Good morning, traders. So I've got a trade that I had made a while back that I want to share with you. And it's not to, uh, you know, to gloat or anything like that. It's to show off the power of long calls in a stock that takes off rapidly. So what I want to look at here is I want to specifically look at this stock, Avgo. So this is a stock that I had been watching for some time. It's one that I felt like I wanted to own long term. And I had been watching the chart. And again, this I'm talking a long term investment here. I'm not talking a short term options trade. And when I saw the price getting down into this range here, I decided it's something that I wanted to put in my retirement account. I wanted to have a stake in the company. So at that point, I had a couple of different possibilities. If I was willing to put roughly $10,000 into the trade, which is kind of what I had budgeted for that, I could come out and I could buy about 22 shares of the stock at that point, or I could buy one, what we call a leap, which is an option that doesn't expire for a couple years. So those were the two different scenarios that I looked at. And I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of both of those here in a moment. But what I do want you to see, I mean, obviously my selection here was pretty good because if we, if we come and look at this, this thing has you know, skyrocketed quite a bit since then. It's kind of followed the path of NVIDIA and some of the others. So let's see how those two compare and contrast, if you will, from an investment standpoint. So if I came in and I bought the 22 shares of long stock at the $450, I would be up $17,000 in that trade, or 178%. And again, I invested $9,900 at the time that I bought this. I have an infinite max profit, of course, because this can go up forever. I could also have lost $9,900 if this thing tanked and sold off to zero. So all good stuff. My break-even is essentially what I paid for the stock. In other words, if I bought it at $450, if it goes below 450 and I own the stock, I'm down a few cents. If it goes up, I'm up a few cents. So my break even is right there at 450. Now, my premise in this stock, and I did a similar trade in NVIDIA and I did a similar one in Costco, my premise is that these things were potential rocket ships, that they could move pretty quickly. And again, premise happened to have been borne out over the past year in this stock. Now let's look at the same $9,800 investment buying one long call. So if I bought one long call in this thing, a couple things. First of all, I'm up 720% in the trade. I had the same investment, $9,800, okay? But you'll notice that my max risk here is essentially the same. My max risk now, you could say it's the same. Maybe it's not. It depends on how you look at it. If Avgo were to have gone to zero of the stock, when I owned the stock, I would have lost $9,800. If Avgo just went down to, you know, 425 or so, I would have only lost 20 I don't know, $20 per share, something along those lines, so four or $500. So again, the premise had to be here that I was expecting this to move up significantly. And I did have the risk of $9,800 in loss, but that risk could be realized if the stock only pulled back a little bit. And I also, my break even, I had to get above $548. Remember at the time I bought this, it was $450. I had to get above that point over the two year period of that leap. So again, I bought this out in January of 25, and I bought this back in late 2022. So I had at least two plus years for this to get above the $548. And of course, it, it has done that, and it has taken off considerably. Now, another thing I can do with this that I couldn't really do with 20 shares of stock Let's just say that I felt like, you know what, this thing's getting kind of frothy at this point. 
I really don't see it going a lot higher. I could come in and I could sell a short call against this. So I can sell a call and I can sell it, you know, that same January 17, but I can sell that thing up at, you know, some much higher price. I could sell it up at $1,400, something along those lines. And that is going to add a nice amount to this trade. In other words, I'd be picking up another $10,000 in this trade. And I would at the same time, let me take this all the way out to expiration here. So I would be locking in, or if this thing continued to go up, I'd be capping my gain at about $96,000. But you'll also see to the downside, I have totally eliminated any risk of loss in this trade. Now, I have not eliminated the risk of giving back a significant amount of this profit, but I have eliminated the risk of loss. So when I can toggle back and forth between these two, look at these two different scenarios, you know, adding that short call at 1400 and just going back and forth and looking at those two. So anyhow, the goal here was to just try to show how many times, especially, in, and I'll do this usually in stocks that might not pay a dividend, because obviously if I have an option and the stock is a dividend stock, I'm not going to get that dividend. So if it's a dividend paying stock, a Johnson & Johnson, things like that, first of all, those things usually aren't, you know, skyrocket sorts of stocks. And so I'd rather own the stock in those cases and then get the dividend payout for them. And then I'm also not paying that premium, in this case, that $9,600 that I had to pay to get into this trade or $9,800. This is an amount that will decay over time. But again, if you get a meteoric rise, that doesn't really matter. But I, I will do this in something that I'm expecting a big pop or a meteoric rise over a period of a couple years. And at the time that this gets to expiration, at that point, I can make the decision. Do I want to go ahead and take assignment of 100 shares for the $450? Obviously, that's a, a good chunk of change that I'd have to put out on that, $45,000. But I've made enough that I can do that if that's what I choose to do. Or I could just close my options position as it nears expiration or any time along the way here. If I felt like, yeah, this is enough, I'm going to go ahead and, and sell this position right now, I could do that, of course, locking in that gain. So again, with only 22 shares of stock, I can't sell a call against it. I have to have at least 100, particularly if I'm going to be in an IRA uh, type account or a retirement type account. So that's what I wanted to basically share with you is how Sometimes uh, you can use a long dated option, a leap, they call it, as a stock replacement, but you do have to understand that you're going to have decay in there and that you are going to have a break even threshold that you will have to get above. And you're going to have to be comfortable with that in order to consider something like this. But if you are comfortable uh, with that scenario, this can be a great trade to use as long-term investments. That's it. Take care.